cause you to be bound by something that maybe you don't even understand that sometimes, but it's something about God that he will take you and put you in bonds of something that he wants to reveal to you. you to be in, in the position now that you are in communion with the Father. He said, you all stay in the proper posture. You all know as sons and daughters, that's the thing I always say. You must be in the proper posture to receive anything because if you're here but your posture is off, you can't get what God has. So he tells them something. He says, as I'm on my assignment, you must stay in prayer. He said, listen, you okay. can't drop the ball. You've got to be in position because why? There's some places I've got to go that maybe you can't ascend to yet, but I need you to be in the foundational place. And in the foundational place is a place of prayer. It's a place of communion. It's a place of being in the presence of God. It's a place now where you allow God to manifest himself as nothing else. Listen, listen, because one thing, we may know God through our salvation. We may know God as our redeemer. We may know God as a healer. We may know is all of these different things, but how many can say that you know him as your prayer partner? Come on. How many can really say that I'm connected to God, I'm a friend of God, and because of that, we commune together. See, I, uh, many people have friends, and they say, I call my prayer partner, and we pray through. Ah, but something about the presence of God, that when you have been birthed in prayer, you don't call nobody else to get a connection in prayer. You got the right person that must be the right. Oh, hear me today. That must be the one know one way we only you know we only know father forgive us of our sins and wash me in the blood and you know we only know what we have heard and because we only know what we have heard we haven't been birthed in prayer but we have become repetitious in prayer and so when you are repetitious in prayer you just do what somebody else did and you echo and utter what somebody else uttered and you continue to release something that's already been released and so surely you really don't need a manifestation from God if you're echoing something Oh, you got to hear me today. If I really want something from God, then I have to relinquish my right in the flesh to come into a place of prayer by the Spirit of God to be able to take over and release what needs to be done. Yeah. Oh, my oh. 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 I want you to continue. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's pastors in here, a lot of leaders. Heck, he I saw there's, there's not a many babies in here. And so, you know, you know, when you're telling the leadership to continue in something, that means that there must be something else. Come on, there's something bigger. There's something greater. There's something that you haven't tapped into. So he wasn't telling them to do the same thing over. He was telling them to do in addition to what was already being done. He was saying, listen, now you have tapped a certain place up into this point of power. Prophets, uh, evangelists, and teachers, uh, but there's something else that God is requiring of you, and He said, I need you to continue, not in what you have known, but I need you to continue to get tapped into another realm in the spirit that you have not known yet. As a child, mm. was one style of praying. Right. What I, what I understood is so I would stand up and say what I heard other people say. Right, right. And so they would say, you know, oh, Lord, hey, touch right now in the name of Jesus and come down, Father. Okay, y'all wouldn't raise like that. So, so, you know, they would say things like that. So when I first got up and they said, I need you to pray, I didn't know what to do but what I heard. So, so I stood up and just said, oh, Lord, hey, touch right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Do it right now in the name of Jesus, y'all. And so I begin to follow a pattern that had been laid. But the pattern that's been laid is not necessarily the pattern of God. And so many times we follow things that we don't necessarily have understanding about. And so we can duplicate something that produces no results. So even though I saw them saying, oh, Lord, hey, nothing was made. For us, and so I said, You know what? I gotta try this thing and get into a place with God. And God, you fill my mouth with what's supposed to be said that will transition me from what I know to what I've never experienced. 
Anywhere. Yeah. Continue. Not what you know. <laughs> I need you. I need you to erase that tonight. I need you to erase that tonight. I need you. Y'all hear me tonight? I need you to, to throw that out the window because uh, what you have known is not going to take you where you need to go in this next hour. What you have been complacent in is not going to get you where you need to go in this next hour. How you have prayed. Come on, people of God. It's not going to take you into the dimension that's going to cover you and keep you in the realm that you need to be in by the Spirit. So he says, I need to transition. Look at somebody tonight and tell them, I've got to transition from where I've been and continue into another place. Yes. I got to continue. Yes. I got I to gotta move. I got to move now to another dimension. I got to I gotta tap in, and I've got to learn how to let God teach me how to pray. So I moved from that first stage, and I was in position from just saying, oh, Lord, do it, God. Come on, somebody, because we didn't know nothing else. And I learned how to transition myself to say, you know what? I'm going to learn how to pray the word. Y'all hear me tonight. So I started to learn how to pray the word. And in praying the word, the the word is the thing that will go forth that will not return back for it. So the word is the thing that needs to manifest itself, that will release something in the earth. So how come when we pray these empty prayers, we don't get a return because we're not praying in the ordinance of God, which means we have to pray the word and not our flesh. If I, if I pray only what I know that is happening, Protect my children, my family. Come on, somebody. Touch now. Do it now on behalf of what I know. But I have no word backing what I'm saying. Then I'm not producing anything. But when I get ready to have something that I need to pray, it's called a target prayer. And a target prayer means I find a scripture according to what I'm going through. And I begin to echo and utter what the Spirit of the Lord has said. And I remind him. Because we're not getting results. 
Church, come on. I got leaders in here. You're not getting the results you want because you haven't known the order. And when I don't know the order of prayer, I will release anything in the atmosphere. And you know how it is when you're really not accurate in something. You just shoot stuff everywhere and hoping that something hits. Y'all hear me? But when you become accurate and you become a target shooter, you say, listen, I ain't trying to hit nothing else on this board, but I want that white door right there.
praying for a long time. Come on, I hear people, I've been praying a long time. And I see you in the same right place you was in 30 years ago. Nothing changed about you. I see you in the same place you was in before. Nothing happened. Your ministry ain't moved. Your life ain't changed. You still stuck in the same thing you've been stuck in. You know why? Because you got to 12th grade and stopped. My God. You didn't, you didn't try to accelerate. You didn't try to ascend. You didn't try to go no further. So, you can't have dominion if you're not willing to walk. Right, right, right. You, you, you can't rise above if you're not willing to walk for it. That's why they say elementary is free. <laughs> High school is free, y'all. Middle school is free. But if you go on the you don't have to be deep. You don't have to do something that you haven't done. Oh, we're going to give you some freedom. Salvation is free to all who will receive. But I need somebody that's ready to continue in the next measure of prayer. I don't need no high school students. I don't need elementary students. How do you know if you're elementary? Overseer helps you today if you can't pray an hour. You can't pray 30 minutes. You repetition saying the same thing over and over. You don't have no real prayer. Life. You got elementary foundation. So when I grew up, they would say, You ain't got <laughs> Go back. Go back, man. We can't, we can't do that now. But my apostle would say, Go back. You got to come along. Go back and get to another measure. Go back and get to something else. Because they ain't got no death to it. When you, when you start telling people like that, possibly they don't really want to be around you. Because now, I thought I was somebody great. And you know you great on local level. But you ain't great on global. You great in your intention. But you ain't great on local. You great where you are. But I ain't trying to keep you where you are.
you for what has already been released, y'all. I transition. When you really continue in prayer, your prayers begin to change. So you know how deep a person is in their prayer life when they get up to pray and say, Lord bless, Lord give, Lord y'all hear me. You understand how they develop and they have transition when they say, Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Why? What's happening is they're positioning now from becoming a beggar to being in position now to being a seeker. And when you become a seeker, it transitions you into a place where you can tap into open doors and manifestations of the power of God. Mindset. My, my, my. He said, become thankful. Become thankful. So, there are times in prayer when you shouldn't ask for nothing. That's Come on. That's real. That's good. That's right. You should come That's wanting right. nothing. You know, we sing the songs, and, you know, but, but you should come to that place right. where I'm so in God that I don't want nothing else from you in this earth. I'm trying to take you somewhere. You become so content in God that I'm thanking you for everything that you've done here because what you have done here is already enough. Come on. Wow. What you have released is all wow. because I'm really not, I'm, I'm not able to really receive. I wasn't supposed to get really all of what I got so far. So I become thankful, understanding that he has released many things to me that I really didn't have a right to, but because he was able to pull me up to this place, he Continue. He tells them to watch and he tells them to be in thanksgiving. Now, now look what happens. Look, look at this. He says, with all also praying for who? Us. Mama. That God would open yeah. unto us yeah. a door yep, yep. of yeah. utterance. Yes. Now, he says, at some point in these initial stages, he said, we've seen windows, we've seen cracks, we've seen seeps of things from here and there. He said, but you know what? Because I'm maturing in God now, I'm not even looking for those little cracks and drops. I'm not looking for small portions. He said, I am trying to get... I don't even want you to pray for me for another car, y'all. Right, right, right. See, let me make it. Let me make it. Play. I don't want you to just pray for me to get a house. Come on, America, because you know we're prosperity driven. Right, we, right. We've got to have more, no matter how much we have. It's in us to have more of everything, even though we have abundance of everything now. Yeah. Right. He said, "You know what? In everything that I have." I need you to pray for me now. Pray with us that something transitions in my life that I get an open yes. door. Yes. Come on. Yes. I, I need an open door. I don't need just another touch. Come on. <laughs> I don't need just another, you know, quickening and a, yep. and a presence. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. All of that is great, but I don't even need that. I need something that becomes effective in the earth realm. Oh, yeah. yes. Now, now you've got to understand what you receive in the presence of God in a servant touches you like if you get in a tub and you get out the tub and you know you're still dripping, but after a while, even if you don't use no towel, you're going to become dry, y'all. So what happens is in the presence of God, you get all pumped up. You get the presence of God. You, you're going for it. We say, hey, God's releasing. The power of God is falling. But if you go home and you don't continue in what you tap into, what happens is you get dead. You get dry. And then we got to come back in here and pump Hear me? Because there's something in you that you weren't keeping wet, so you had to come in here and be pumped by my son because you were dry and didn't know it. Oh, oh my God! You didn't even know you were dry. You didn't even 
more dry. Because you, you've been giving out, 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 giving out. Now when it's time for you to get yours, I don't need no towel because I'm dry. You're dry. Thought I was, thought I was wet. Oh, Come forth. Come forth. Thought, thought I had prayer. Thought I, thought I had something. Thought, see, see, over see when you was going forth earlier, I was ready. To see what over there? It's on. We might not be out of church for 10 or 15 hours. It's on. And when they say prayer, oh, no. he said, I'm going to keep you now for five hours. He told them earlier today. And it was about, you know, 2.30. We had been going only about two and a half hours. And some of that spirit dropped. And he said, oh, I'm in America. I won't keep you five. <laughs> see, you know what? Because y'all ain't ready. You try it.
may be dry to Valdosta every week for a month and drive in the city and pray. Didn't know nobody, didn't understand it. I told the people, hey, I'm going back to Valdosta. I'll, don't worry, I'll be back later. Why? Because I'm under the unction of the utterance of God. When you understand the mandate of God, it is bigger than what you want to accomplish in your own self. It is bigger than what you can even comprehend because the mind of God is not the mind of man. And so God will have you do weird things that will seem crazy to other people, but it's causing a big door to be, oh y'all, here we go. It's causing something to manifest. So then when people want to receive the fruit of something and I start to give you the formula of what it takes to get the same fruit, you back out. Come on, I talk to the night.
let you just tap or touch one time. It's not something that you can grab a hold to and say, I, I touched the portal and now I'm done. He said, no, no. When you tap into this, it's living, which means it's always moving. It's always progressive. And if you're not continuing, come on, you can catch a glimpse of it and it can be gone. Y'all hear me? If you're not moving with it, if you're not in the capacity to stay where the portal is open, to stay connected. So Paul was saying, I'm not asking for a natural thing, but I'm asking you to pray for this door of order utterance that there will always be a voice that will be downloaded into me. That it will keep me progressing in the will of God. That I will never stop in one place. But I will continue to advance until I finish my race. Mama. He said, I need to be transitioned. Mm -hmm. This is why we throw words around. We're not religious. Yeah. You know, don't be religious. You know. But many times we don't realize how religious we are. We are, right? Real, real. We don't realize it until it hits our home. Yeah, yeah. We don't realize it until it transitions us into the mindset that gets us now into another dimension. Hear me. You don't realize it until you've been in the same setting over and over. Come on, somebody. And then you get broken out into something different. You don't realize how religious you are until you tap into something that you've never tapped into. Hear what I'm saying. You don't realize how you're so westernized until you go somewhere else and see something and realize there are many faces of God. You don't realize how you're locked in a box until you get out of that box and realize I never want to get back in again. You don't realize until you see other people who have tapped into a place and said they're doing the same thing over. Paul said, what y'all doing is okay, but I don't want that. I want you to continue to release me that I'll be able to continue into a realm outside of the box. Anybody here tonight want to come out the box, want to get into another realm of God's glory? Anybody tonight want to be transitioned into another measure so that God can release the utterance of God in your life? Anybody tonight? I'm so hungry for a thing I can't comprehend. I'm, I'm so hungry for something that I can't understand. Remember, prophet, as I told you some years back, I said I want to be like Ezekiel. I want to see them four living beings that he saw when he was caught up. And the Lord told me something. He said, listen, I'm getting you prepared for that because you can't just run up in that. You got to go through the process to come up into the heaven where the portal is released. Do y'all hear me? We got to transition ourselves from fleshliness in the body of Christ into really tapping into the heavenly places. I told them the other day, there are spiritual blessings that are being released in heavenly places. If it's a spiritual blessing, it's not something. If it's a spiritual blessing, it's not something that God would be able to give you something naturally. He said it's a spiritual blessing. That means it's something eternal. Whoa! Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This is a part of the door of utterance because it is not something natural that I can eat of. Right, right. A spiritual blessing is something that maintains in my spirit and keeps my flesh when I'm not able to keep it itself. Wow, wow. A spiritual blessing downloads things and releases manifestations for you so that the thing that you're naturally praying for, he knows you're never going to pray for that. Come on, somebody. A spiritual blessing is to intercede on your behalf to get you in the position of where God wants to take you because he knows you don't know what to pray for. Right. 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 Something spiritual. Wow. Amen. So he says, Paul, I'm giving you yes, Lord. tools in the door. Yes, Lord. 
tools in the door. Because if he just needed the door, he wouldn't have said door of utterance. If he just needed the door, he wouldn't have stopped and said, just give them, just pray for me a door. He said, I need to pray for an effective. Come on. Come on. Effective. Come on, somebody. Not just any door, but an effective door. Come on. And that door must have utterance in it. It can't. It can't just be any kind of door. But what I need must be something bigger. Bigger. Must be something greater. Yeah. And it must be something that has to be downloaded to change my mindset. My mind. Yeah. Something that I myself could not produce. Mm -hmm. yes, this door, we can't open. This is right. You hear what I said? This door, we can't open. But how can we get access for the opening? Continue, Continue. in prayer. Right. <laughs> how can I get access? I've got to continue. Oh, y'all hear me? I got to keep asking for the elevations that will get me to the door. Do y'all hear me? There's a place in the heavens that have doors. Yeah. You know, heaven is not just like, oh, it's the sky and that's heaven. No. He said there are places in heaven that have doors. The Bible also talks about the gates in heaven. Come on, somebody. It also transitions your mindset. So I'm not just trying to get to heaven. I want to go up to the high one. I want to be up there where the elders are around the throne. What's happening? I'm coming. Somebody. It didn't say that no more elders could come. It didn't say that nobody else could tap that place. It just said that they were around the throne. It didn't say you couldn't get access. It didn't say you couldn't come up. But he needs a church that will start climbing. Come on. He needs a church that will start elevating. He needs a church that will transition. He needs a church that will come up. Is there anybody craving to come up? Our 
when God say leave your seat. Come on. Right, right, right. Come on, yeah. That's why we can't give up when it's hard. You know, I built this and I put this together and I did this. And so people can't comprehend, prophet. Why in the world do a apostle get established and do all that stuff and save people and minister and then get up and leave? Because it ain't about me. It's about accomplishing the will of God for that moment and that time. And then I got to keep working. This is where God birthed me. I'm going to always be here. Come on. And I got my church established. And I got my leaders. And I got my people. But what if God says, this ain't yours. This is mine. And I never told you you was going to be there for life. I never told you this was your ministry. I never told you, y'all hear me, that it was about you. I told you to do the will of my father. I never told you to come in alignment according to what you wanted in your flesh. Because your ministry can become your God. Your ministry can become your baby. Your ministry can become your mistress. Your ministry can become anything you allow to be until you come to know God more. So anything that you love more than God, he'll take it. I want to know. Do you love me? Do you, do you love me like that? That whatever I require, you can give it. So he was, he was shaking because he was saying, I know y'all still down there. And I'm going to love you where you are. But I want you to continue. And while you continue, eventually, just pray for me about this. I, I know you might not even want to come. Because it's going to cost something for some of y'all to come. And you might not want to pay all that. You might not You might not want to let go of her. You might not want to give up your house. And come. You might not want to have to move. You might not want to have to live. Or you might not, not want to have to do some things I'm required. But I'm asking you to pray for me. Because I'm As your leader, yes, come on. my Lord. Paul was telling the Colossians, as your leader, if you pray for me, yeah. and I get the utterance, yeah. and I get the door, oh, I can feed you yeah. from heavenly places. If you pray for me, I can release jewels. I can put stuff in your belly that maybe you didn't have to access it, but because I went in and I was able to get that thing. Now Paul said, just keep praying, but as you pray, I'm gonna keep going. As you pray, I can enter into the next dimension. As you pray for me, I can now gain access to the things that we really need. Yes, 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 Lord. Lord. yes Lord. 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 Because what you need, you really don't know what you need. And what you pray for, you really don't know what to pray for. And what you ask, you really don't know what to ask. So that's why when I get on the prayer line, I don't know which way I got to go. Because he'll say, you got to go this way. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Lord, I wanted to pray for women of virtue. I wanted to pray for that prayer today. I wanted to say, no, no, you pray from the heavens down. Right, right. Let that's them pray from the earth up. Yeah. Yeah. And in the middle, there'll be a collision. Come on, somebody. There will be a, a conception that will be burned because somebody's got to be up here and somebody's got to be down there. But when we meet in the middle, there's a birthing that takes place that gives benefit to everybody that is connected. Why? Because you just stay on your post. Don't come off your post. You're not praying like you were praying five years ago. You, you're not praying like you're praying. You remember we went to Jamaica? And we said we're going to prayer service. We got up in there. Woo! 
it was J.M. Beck. And we was like, woo! And we got on it. And we went to run. And after about two hours, our clothes was fully drenched. We was completely wet from head to toe. And they were still And we said, okay, we got to get ready. Help us, Jesus. And they kept going. And then 1 o'clock in the morning came. And we were saying, oh, God. And then we said, maybe they're about to close out now. And probably just leaned over. I said, if they go in, we go in. Anybody can get. If that's what it's going to take, I've got to do something different. Yes. 